We will uncover the long hidden ancient books and we will read them. We will discover the intimate stories of our ancestors, the Nazarenes, and we will recount them. And those brave souls who established our faith, people like the brothers and sisters of our Savior, we will name them, many for the very first time, and they will be strangers no more. This is your host, Jackson Snyder of the Netzari Ahadim. For more information about the First Nazarene, join us at theyahad.org. T-H-E-Y-A-H-A-D.org. Until then, we hope you will enjoy each broadcast of The First, The First, The First Nazarene. This is the first Nazarene Israelite Arab Shabbat service uh, coming on February 24th, 2012. And this is the Vero Beach Netzari Yahad. Our Father Yahweh tells us, Keep justice and do right, for soon Yeshua T will come, and my deliverance be revealed. Blessed is, is the one who holds this fast, who keeps the Shabbat, not profaning it, and keeps his hand from doing any evil. Let not the joined stranger say, Yahweh will surely call me out of his people. Let not the man say, I am a dry tree, for Yahweh says, To all those who keep my Shabbatot, who choose the things that please me and hold Hold fast my covenant. I will give a name better than sons and daughters, an everlasting name. Even strangers who join themselves to minister to Yahweh and love my name. Everyone who keeps the Shabbat and holds fast my covenant, I will bring to my set apart mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. For mine will be a house of prayer for all people. Father Yahweh, we come to you tonight with uh, hearts full of desire for your input, for your love, for your imminence, for your emet for your world to come. We ask that as we progress through this time together, that you would bring us into close Yahad and Echad with you and the Son, and that you would help us to use what spirit that we are given and the knowledge that comes with it to become better stewards of our world and servants to our friends. We ask it in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. We'll welcome the Sabbath now. Everybody, blessed are you, Yahweh our Elohim. King, King of the universe, who has sanctified us by your mitzvah and calls us to hear the full Shabbat. Blessed are you, Yahweh our Elohim, King of the universe, who has given us the way of salvation in Messiah Yeshua. Amen. So with joy you will draw forth water from the springs of salvation. All you men, may Elohim make you like Ephraim and Manasseh. All you ladies, may Elohim make you like Sarah, Rivka, Raquel, and Leah. May Elohim bless you and watch over you. May Elohim shine his face towards you and show you favor. May Elohim be favorably disposed towards you and grant you peace. How lovely are your tents, O Yaakov, your dwelling places, Israel. O Yahweh, through your abundant favor, we will enter your house. In awe, we will bow down towards your set-apart sanctuary. We love the house in which you live and the place we are composed resides. We will fall and bow bending the knee before Yahweh our Maker. May our prayers to you be at the appropriate time. In your abundant righteousness, answer us with the truth of your salvation. Where is that place that he dwells and where his name is planted? In, in us and in our fellowship. Amen. Is it necessary then to look to Jerusalem in these days? No. Shema. Let's try it in Hebrew. Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Echad. Baruch Shem and in English, Hear O Israel, Yahweh is our Elohim, 
Yahweh is one. Blessed is the name of his glorious kingdom for all eternity. That you will love Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And have these words which I command you this day be upon your heart, and you will teach them diligently to your children, and speak of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you retire, and when you arise. And you will bind them for a sign upon your hand, and let them be frontlets between your eyes. And you will write them on the doorposts of your house, and upon your gates as you love your neighbor as yourself continually. Barku et Yahweh Hamavorak. Barku Yahweh Hamavorak Leolam Ba'ed. Bless Yahweh, the Blessed One. Bless is Yahweh, the Blessed One, for all eternity. Remember the Shabbat to keep it set apart. Six days will you labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh your Elohim. In it you will not do any work. For in six days Yahweh made the heaven and the earth, the sea, and is all that's in them. And rested on the seventh day. That's why Yahweh blessed the Shabbat and hallowed it. Speak also unto the children of Israel, saying, Above all, my Sabbaths you will keep. But this is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I am Yahweh who sanctifies you. The Israelites are to observe the Shabbat, celebrating it for the generations to come as an everlasting covenant. It will be a sign between me and the Israelites forever. For in six days Yahweh made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he abstained from work and rested. And it will come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Shabbat to another, all flesh will come to worship before me, says Yahweh. The more I've been reading in the uh, translation of Enoch that I have been doing all these several years, the more convinced I am that the people of the earliest Nazarene movement were um, were worshiping within the realm of angels, Malachim. Uh, it, it becomes more and more evident, especially in the section in Enoch where the Son of Man is described extensively. Uh, Son of Man being a title that Yahshua in the New Testament used regarding himself uh, more than 150 times. In that section, we find that the Son of Man is the one that is among the Elohim and among the Malachim, and that a little farther on, we learn that those who are Zadik, those who are Kadosh, they also can expect to inherit that same kind of life that Yahshua did. Um, it's not for everybody. Sky tripping, sky living is not for everybody. Only the Bakar one, the chosen one, the Zadikim, those that are righteous before him by keeping his Torah, those that are Kadosh, that, that is, those that are set apart before him, and those that are the Bakarim, those that are chosen for him, those are the ones that inherit the kind of life that we're looking forward to, whereas on the other hand, the Kata'im have judgment to look forward to, and what that judgment means, that is Kata'im, those that are lawbreakers, uh, what that judgment looks like to me is that they will actually stand before a judiciary and be tried. In the New Testament, it makes it clear who makes up that judiciary. It is to be made up by the Pakarim, that is, the chosen ones of Yahweh, that is, the humanity that has been uh, true to his word and are th those that are looking forward to ruling and reigning with him in the kingdom that is here but is also coming. So um, I had a little reservation in the past about using this part, this piece, on account of uh, the idea of maybe worshiping angels, but I found out that there is nothing wrong. In fact, it can be sublime to worship with angels, Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. So let's say this blessing together, and let's try it in both English and Hebrew. You notice that there's three stanzas here. There's also a fourth stanza that, that is included in this section that is put at the end of the service on account of it is a blessing for those that are departing. And so we save that for the time of our departure. Let's try. Peace be unto you, ministering Malachim, Malachim of the Most High, coming forth from the King of Kings, 
kings to set apart one, lest they see. Shalom Malakim Malakai Hashalit Malakai Elyon Mimilek Malakai Hamlakim Hakadosh Baruch Hu. May your coming forth be in peace, Malakim of peace, Malakim of the Most High, coming forth from the King of Kings to set apart one, lest they see. Boakim Le Shalom Malakai Ashalom Malakai Elyon Mimilek Malakai Hamlakim Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Bless me with Shalom, Malakim of Shalom, Malakim of the Most High, coming forth from the King of Kings to set apart one. Blessed is He. Barkune Le Shalom Malakai Ashalom Malakai Elyon Mimilek Malakai Hamlakim. Hakadosh Baruch Wonderful job. Wonderful. You're worshiping in the royal tongue. Today from the lectionary, we do have a psalm reading. And we're going to find out what it is again on our friend Facebook. See if I can sign you up and sign me in. Maybe I can go over to you. Good picture. I said, I'm not your friend, are you? Okay. I have no friends. You gotta go to Yahad and then you get it from there. Oh, okay. Or you scroll down halfway through on the left side, you'll see the Yahad. I think on the left hand side, not on too far back. Oh, on the left. Should be on the left somewhere. Should it? No. The Yahad of Fear Beach. Right there. Try something out. Just log out and log back in. I don't even know how to. There's a ton of time. On the right hand side, on top, it says home or it says the arrow. This is definitely not me. Mm-hmm. Is it? That's top right, it says home, and there's a little arrow on the right. Yeah. Start typing this down. It says log out, log out. You log in your email, you pass your Facebook pass. You know it. It was just in there. There you are. Oh, it is you. At least one of you. That's <laughs> oh, that smile on your face. My daughter says, finally, a picture that looks like. <laughs> is that a compliment? Yeah. Oh, so we'll just make this better. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> All right, that song is 25, 1 through 9. I brought with me tonight the unusual Bethel edition. If you have a scripture, you might want to turn to Tehillim 25. You got bushes and stakes behind it. Huh? You got bushes and stakes behind it if you want to. Oh. <laughs> that part gets cut. Oh, that's right. We're out of Said days is Maybe I can get a little something up here. I don't think that picture looks that much like me. It looks more like an old man. No? Good. I'm going to take it off. Put some of my picture 10, 20 years. Well, you can put it on today. Take it from the spot. Got to be above instead of right there. Would you take it? Sure. <laughs> All right. Would somebody like to read it loud and clear? Sure. First time verse 10, Psalm 25. <laughs> I left to you, O Yahweh. I left up my being. Should I do the bit? If you want. Bit. Oh, my Elohim. In you I have put my trust. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies exult over me. <laughs> Gimel. Indeed, let no one who waits on you be ashamed. Let those who are treacherous without cause be ashamed. Dalet. Show me your ways, O Yahweh. Teach me your paths. Hey, lead me in your truth, Va, and teach me. For you are the Elohim of my deliverance. On you I wait all the day long. Zayim. Remember, O Elohim, your compassion and your loving commitment. For they are from everlasting head. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my transgression. According to your loving commitment, remember me for your goodness sake, O Yahweh. Tet. Good and straight is Yahweh. Therefore, he teaches sinners in way. Yo. He guides the meek ones in right, and he teaches the meek one way. Okay. Notice a couple of things. First of all, this is an acrostic psalm. Acrostic, we talked about it a week or two ago. We ran into another one where it uh, takes the letters of the Hebrew alphabet, and uh, each section begins with that particular letter, which you can't really see in English, although maybe you can in verse 10, where it's kaf, and the first word is kindness, and the next one is lamed. I think they try to do it here on some of them. Lamed begins let in English, and mem begins with man, and noon begins with neighbor. So there's been some intention here with the way that it's, it's translated anyway in this New Jerusalem. We look back, and they, they do it each, each time 
time. Now that's ad- adoration, but according to the English alphabet rather than the Hebrew. That's pretty cool. Another thing I noticed here in conjunction with the idea of the judgment of sinners is that one of the things that this psalm tells us, and it comes from a, a good source actually, that Yahweh leads sinners back if they will come. Because, uh, you know, David, Dawid, a man after his own heart, was in fact a very grave sinner in a number of ways, despite whether the followers of David uh, in the scripture, especially in books like First and Second Chronicles, want to admit it or not. He was. And evidently, he, in, he continued to be in the chase for the Father throughout his life and found restitution and repentance. I think of Psalm 51 in that, where he cries out, creating me the clean heart, purge me with hyssop that I might be clean. I imagine that this is one of the reasons that these kinds of psalms are preserved for us to this day. I was thinking this week about praying, and uh, many people don't feel that there's any use for a written prayer. What I'm saying is they would not think to go into a book of prayers and read a prayer and think that that was of any good. I mean, we've learned in the Protestant tradition, especially the uh, evangelical or charismatic tradition, that to go into a book and read a prayer out, or to read a litany like we do sometimes in here, is uh, a joke in that it's not spiritual, it's spiritually dead. But the fact is, when we read the psalm, we are given the opportunity to experience the same anointing that was there when that psalm was penned in the time of David, which was 3,000 years ago. Not only that, Derek, but what is more powerful than Yahweh's word back? What would move his heart more than that? I can't think of a thing, except maybe a sinner led to repentance, but that's exactly what the word of Yahweh is. It's a word that leads back, it leads to a change of mind. Amen, thank you very much. I've found so many prayers that have been written, and I rewrite them, and I publish them, that certainly had such a an impact on not only the writer, but the receiver, that the prayer was preserved. Sometimes as long as 3,000 years, but many times even 10 years is a long time for a prayer to be preserved. In the book of Enoch, we have the prayer of angels, yeah, that when Michael yes. making his dress, the yeah, about what's going on on the earth. That's the some of those prayers in Enoch of rhyme. I've just moved them around here lately and gone to rhyme without changing the context of them. And they are prayers that could be used today. There's even a paean, a song of praise to chokmah, you know, wisdom in Enoch. That for it to be preserved is obviously out of place in the text, but it's just kind of like a uh, seed underneath the denture. You can't read this chapter of Enoch, hit this little seed and then go down to the other and not miss the seed in between. It says, wisdom came from the Father and through wisdom, Chokmah or Sophia, all things came to be. Uh, all things were created through wisdom. Wisdom came to find its home. came to find its home and it, it, it went into Jerusalem but came to the earth but could not find its home. So it went back to where it came from. Although the wise and the righteous, she still dwells with them. There's a verse in Sirach, in Ecclesiasticus, that is a mirror image of this this particular poem. It's in Enoch. In Sirach it says, Wisdom, through which all things were created, Chokmah, or in Sirach, would probably be in Greek, Sophia, um, she came to earth to find her home, and she found her home and dwelt there in Jerusalem among the people of faith in the holy place of Elohim. So we find kind of diametric opposites there in that particular pay on a praise where one of the writers is talking about a world that rejects not only the wisdom of Yahweh, but if you see that as a type, the man or woman of wisdom that rejects that one, while in Sirach, who was probably a proto-Pharisee in the apocryphal section of the scripture, he says, yes, that Chokmah came and dwelt and still dwells. And who did Chokmah come to? Well, to us. And she still dwells here through people like me, is what he's saying, because I am a wise teacher, uh, Yahshua, the son of Sirach, also known as the Ecclesiasticus in, in the uh, Greek Bible because it was used in the church, believe it or not, and then cast out in the church. But there you see a couple of things. Some of the, 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 some okay. of the proofs some of the proofs of Enoch that say someone were to say if I quote Enoch to somebody and they say, Well, what is that book? Why why are you considering it? What proof do you have that it's even you 
used back then in, in this form? What proofs can we give them, uh, even ourselves, that would uh, confirm you know? While well, we're on the subject, one of the best proofs, from my understanding, having read the book quite a bit, is from chapter 37 to about 70. In there is the entire New Testament. And <clears throat> it's dated a good ways before the New Testament came up. You have so, proof of that. Well, uh, all you have to do is anybody can read that. If they have any idea of the divine plan and what Yahshua was doing in the divine plan, reading um, um, Enoch 37 to 70, which sounds like a lot of text, but some of those chapters are only a, a verse or two long, gives you the full idea of the Son of Man coming into the world, being bloody, the, the earth snatching up the blood from the Son of Man as a curse, and then the Son of Man standing in for all all those that are righteous to die on the behalf of Yahweh and that, like I was mentioning before, that th these people are destined to be um, judges and elders <clears throat> in a greater, much greater community or kingdom in which the world is judged and all creation is then set at rest from the evil that's been done it and restored and is one big word is ameliorated. The whole world is ameliorated yeah, you look it up sometime. I'm not sure where it's but it, I think it works in there. In those chapters, the whole story is there, using exactly the same um, types of words as, say, Revelation. When you see uh, the, the great one on a throne, white hair, uh, light shining, um, fire blazing, uh, the great um, pool, as it were, crystal sea, and different uh, creatures for creatures are there. It's the exact same setting as Revelation chapter 4 and chapter 8. And we can That's date one. We can date the book of Enoch before. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. It doesn't mention the name Jesus or Yahshua. It's, it was surely known before and it's quoted in, in uh, passages of those early first century writers, including biblically, as you know, in the book of Jude. Now Jude quotes Enoch chapter 6 in regards to the kind of world that he's living in. It's a world that's it's a devil-filled world, as Luther would say. And Jude quotes that, Jude 15, I think. Jude also quotes, as, as we mentioned last week, the assumption of Moses about the fight over the body of Moses and why Moses shows up in the transfiguration as being alive when we know Moses was, had died on top of a mountain. That's one. The second one, I'd say, is that quotation. The very fact that not only is it directly quoted, but in the New Testament alludes to the Enoch and idea const constant, the darkness and light, the sinners and saints, the duality. You have been listening to Jackson Snyder Presents on Hebrew Nation Radio.